There had been few visitors in our small shop. My wife liked to make strange things, such as rainbow bread, Lao Gan Ma chili sauce macaron, mustard donuts, and balsam pear sandwiches. So, apart from the neighbors who bought normal goods in the shop sometimes, only some curious passers-by would come to have a try, and even fewer would come back again. But I never paid too much attention to the turnover. As long as she was happy, that was enough. However, recently a lad in a cap had visited our shop many times. His most common order was caviar egg tarts and durian meat floss bread. I didn't expect anyone would dare to try this combination of foods. After several visits, I found he looked like the brat on my wife's phone screensaver. I felt a little jealous and decided to launch an attack on him, which was the first time I took the initiative to talk to him. Are you Kiro? The lad was apparently surprised that I recognized him. He quickly lowered his cap and put his index finger on his mouth. He glanced around. I really like the desserts here, so... He must be kidding. I, a mature, middle-aged man, was regarded by him as his fanatic fan. I snorted disdainfully. Just then, my wife came along with a low cry of surprise. And then she winked at me. All right. I cleared my throat and walked towards the lad in a cap. May I have your signature? Since then, Kira would appear in the shop from time to time, and he was more easygoing than I thought. We both liked to hear him talk about his experiences in filming. Sometimes, when his scenes flashed on TV, he would seriously ask us if there was anything that he needed to improve. Both my wife and I thought he was really popular for good reason. However, behind his brilliant smile, I could occasionally feel something different. It was like a paper that couldn't be penetrated. After all, he was a superstar. Ordinary people like us just couldn't understand their world. They must have one or two faces of their own behind the screen. On that day, my wife put a row of her masterpieces on the shelf as usual. Kiro stood in front of the shelf with a serious expression. I wonder if Miss Chips will like this one. Normally she wouldn't, I silently replied in my heart. The name sounded like a girl. I guessed it was someone very important to him. So I'd better not let my wife destroy their relationship. I went up and pointed to a normal dessert. I recommend this one for girls. Really? Although I want her to taste what I like, I'll get one of that since you think it's better. After that, he leaned forward and frowned. Well, what gift do you think would be better to surprise a girl? You come to the right person. I do have a lot of life experiences. The so-called surprise is to be unexpected. For example, on your anniversary, why do you have to give 99 roses? You can give her 99 French baguettes instead. As soon as I finished, the atmosphere became a little awkward. My wife came over from the counter smiling. Don't listen to him. It's a total waste of time. I just realized. Kiro pounded his lips. How did you make such a beautiful lady become your wife? I was not happy with that. Hold on, I have other ways. While I was talking, the brat across from me started to tease me along with my wife. It suddenly occurred to me that if I had a son, he would be around this age. He would talk to us about the girl he fell in love with as well. Maybe the fire of fatherhood was kindled in my heart. I couldn't help but extend an invite. Bring that girl here next time if you want. It seemed the city was not peaceful recently. The TV was full of worrying news. Just at this moment, Kiro announced that he quit acting. My wife lost the desire to make desserts and began to read the news on the Internet. 
Of course, there was little result, and the official vague information made us all worried. After all, having spent so many days together, I thought we'd become friends. A few days later, he finally appeared, still sitting in his usual position, but he looked exhausted. My wife and I looked at each other and wondered where to start. I went up to him and asked, Still caviar egg tarts and durian meat floss bread? A trace of surprise flashed in his eyes, and he soon smiled as usual. Yes, please. Okay, you brat. I sat opposite him with a cup of coffee. He didn't say anything. Neither did I. Encouragement between men needed no words. My wife came up with her latest dessert creation and asked Kiro to give her advice. I thought it would encourage her to make more creations. Delicious! Kiro kept praising the strange-shaped dessert with a grin, and my wife was very happy when she heard it. Hearing you say that makes me confident. Next week, I'll make more to let everyone have a taste. Well... I tasted it, and intended to put forward some more constructive suggestions before things got worse. My wife glared at me. Do you think your opinion is more professional than Kiro's? That brat laughed louder. I guessed my shop would go bankrupt sooner or later, but that wouldn't be a bad thing. The dark clouds outside seemed to have dispersed. Looking at the two people flattering each other in front of me, I gave up struggling and smiled. This time when he left, I went out with him. You can come to eat here any time. I lit a cigarette to show I understood the vicissitudes of life as an adult. My wife leaned against the door and looked at him with a smile. He tried to smile, but it turned out to be ugly. The kids always acted like that. I understood. I will. I believed he would keep a man's promise. But I also had a strange feeling that he might not come again. My hunch was right. A few months had passed, and Kiro never appeared. My wife's masterpieces became unpopular again. I told her only the two of them had such strange tastes. That brat. I was about to close the shop when I noticed a girl looking through the glass. Excuse me, are you still open? The girl asked politely. I calculated today's turnover in my mind and sighed softly. Curious girl, would you save my wife's self-confidence again? Thank you. Of course. Welcome. The girl walked around in the shop and stopped in front of an unexpected dessert. Wow, it's really here. The girl said happily, peering through the glass cabinet. I was shocked. After excluding the possibility of plagiarism, I rushed forward. Have you ever tried this? The girl smiled. Ki uh, no, a friend of mine had given me this dessert before, so I've been looking for it because it's so delicious. It was her. I sighed, wondering if I should ask how the brat was now. The girl continued. He mysteriously told me that there was a secret base. I didn't expect to find it. Sorry, brat. I might have ruined your surprise but I would not voluntarily admit this. The girl happily bought several desserts and snacks, most of which were relatively normal. She politely thanked me and left. I should ask my wife to make some new products. Maybe they'd be useful one day. I planned silently. The city seemed to be in turmoil everywhere, and the day had been gloomy. My wife told me she had had a headache recently. There were much fewer of her masterpieces in the shop, 
and I felt that the place was a bit too quiet. The guests were wearing large masks and coughing incessantly. This year's seasonal flu seemed to be a bit serious. I sighed and tidied up the table. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. I looked up and saw a silver-haired lad standing at the door of the shop. At first glance, he looked a little familiar, but he had been cold-faced and wearing a black trench coat, which was very different from the brat I knew. Was this one of his relatives who was a gangster? Or some killer who looked very similar to him? There were countless pictures of movies flashing through my mind when my wife came out. He glanced at her, went to the window, and sat down. Kiro used to sit there. Order. I was stunned and didn't respond to what he said. He frowned and raised his voice. Or. Dur. It turned out that the killer ate desserts too. I handed him the menu. He glanced through. Caviar egg tarts and durian meat floss bread. Huh? I thought I misheard. He didn't repeat himself, giving me a cold glance. It seemed I was considered deaf, but the combination was quite suspicious. Sorry, are you sure you want caviar egg tarts and durian meat floss bread? Yes. Still a concise answer. I secretly eyed that cold killer behind the counter and desisted from guessing. After all, no one would have such a sudden change in personality. My wife put the desserts on the table in front of him and added a new snack that Kiro tried before. She smiled, as always. That's all for your order, and this is a giveaway. Hope you enjoy. The killer glanced at her with a nod and started to enjoy the special package, once exclusive to that lad. You... My wife gently put her index finger on her lips and hushed me no sooner than I'd tried to get the answer from her. Suddenly something occurred to me, yet it seemed just an illusion. I smiled and kissed her on the forehead. The killer... No, the silver-haired lad didn't say a word until he left. Placing the money on the counter, he whispered something before turning around. I heard it clearly, despite his light voice. I walked out, watching his firm silhouette fading away, and lit a cigarette. A man's promise is not kept this way, you brat. My wife walked out covered in a coat. She was also infected with the flu and promised me she would see a doctor after I demanded she do so. I snuffed out the cigarette and held her in my arm. Let's go. You'll feel so much better after taking some medicine. And I'll get some stuff for my itchy throat as well. Watching the silver-haired lad leave, we headed in the opposite direction. I thought to myself that we could bake something new together once my wife recovered. So the brat would love it should he come again.